If you are someone who is an experienced IT professional in a different field but looking to transition into data engineering role, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll guide you through the best strategies to prepare for your data engineering interview where I'll be covering the most important questions, key tips and proven techniques to answer them effectively. I have also prepared a detailed documentation covering all the key points we'll be discussing in this video. By the end of this video, you will have a step-by-step -step preparation plan to help you confidently crack your next data engineering interview. So without wasting further time, let's get started. Okay, first and foremost, tell me about your data engineering work experience. You all know that you'll be definitely asked this question in your interview, right? But here is something most candidates don't realize. 90% of the time, your answer to this one question will decide whether you are getting the job or not. The main reason is because this question isn't just about listing your experience. It's a test of how well you understand data engineering in a real world business context. But you might be wondering, how can I answer this question without any real time data engineering work experience? So for this, my best recommendation is to read as many case studies as possible related to modern data engineering work. So if you go to Google and type, Customer and Partner Success Story is Azure. The first link would be from the official Microsoft documentation. And here, you'll find a lot of customer use case where they have achieved their business goal with the help of modern cloud data platform. So I would highly recommend you to read as many articles possible so that you'll have a clear idea of how data engineering impacts the business. And one great thing about this is, here you can see this is classified by multiple industries. Say for example, if you work as a software engineer in a healthcare industry, then you can go to the healthcare section and read through the success stories of other healthcare companies which you can easily relate with. Another great thing about this is, here you have a text box to filter with the keywords. Say for example, if you are learning about Databricks and are interested how it is useful to solve real world problems, then you can search Databricks over here. And now you'll be seeing all the customers who have used Azure Databricks to solve their business problems. And now you can simply go ahead and read through all this to understand the real world context of data engineering. So the reason why I'm saying this is the most important thing to prepare for data engineering interviewers, if you do this continuously, you can easily relate how the different tools that you're learning can be used to solve real world problems. Even if you don't have any data engineering work experience, you'll be able to understand how the tools that you're learning can help your current organization for solving any challenges they are facing currently. So understanding this will help you answer this question better in your interview. Okay, now let's discuss what is the best approach that you should be taking in answering this question. Many candidates make the mistakes of simply listing the tools they have worked with or describing generic data engineering processes. But that's not what interviews are looking for. They want to see how you think, how you solve problems, and most importantly, how will you understand the business objective behind your work. So before answering this question, make sure you are covering three important things. The first one is, what was the objective of the project? Start by explaining the problem your team was trying to solve in the first place. And then, how did you implement the solution? Highlight the technologies, strategies, and decisions you made. And finally, what was the outcome? Share measurable results or improvements that came from your work. By framing your response in this way, you showcase not just your technical skills, but also your problem-solving ability and real-world impact, which is exactly what interviews want to hear. So how to give an answer following all these details? So let me give an example. Let's say you worked for a healthcare company managing patient data. Most of the candidates say something like, I built ATL pipelines using Databricks, which stores data in the data lake and process it in a Metalian architecture way. Instead of this, you may frame something like, at my healthcare organization, Doctors needed real-time access to patient records across different hospitals, but the data was scattered in multiple systems, causing delays in critical treatments. My role was to design a real-time data pipeline using Databricks with features like Apache Spark and Delta Lake to ingest, clean, and store patient data efficiently. This reduced data retrieval time from hours to just a few seconds, enabling doctors to make faster data-driven decisions that improved patient care. 
This approach not only highlights your technical expertise, but also demonstrates problem-solving skills and real-world impact, which will make you stand out in the interview. This is just one example, but you should tailor your answer based on your company's domain. So these examples can be taken from the customer stories documentation. Say for example, I'm opening this case study from the Paraxel company. And here, if you read through the execute summary, this will be structured in the way which I was talking about earlier, which starts with the business problem the company is facing and then talking about the implementation part that was done to solve the problem. And then finally, explaining the outcome that was achieved as part of the solution. This is exactly how you should structure your answer when asked about your data engineering work experience. So I would highly, highly recommend you to read many success stories and case studies for you to answer well to this question and improve your chances of getting hired. Okay, now let's talk about the other important aspects of the data engineering interview. This time, we'll go a little deeper into the field. In my personal experience, I would say to get hired as a data engineer as an experienced IT professional, you'll be tested in these five important elements. Performance, cost, networking, security, and DevOps skills. So it is very important to have these skills if you're already an experienced IT professional looking to get into the data engineering role. And one important thing to note here is, among these skills, the networking and security are not core data engineering skills. Instead, they fall under the infrastructure side. But you might be wondering, if that's the case, why should a data engineer focus on networking and security? The answer to this depends on your experience level. If you're a junior or entry-level professional, you don't need to worry about these topics initially. But if you're an already an experienced IT professional with more than two years of experience, understanding networking and security becomes crucial. The reason for this is, as an experienced professional, you'll not be only involved in performing the data engineering tasks, such as creating ETL pipelines, working on the transformation code, etc. But instead, You'll also be involved in technical discussions, architectural decisions, and infrastructure best practices related to security, networking, and governance. So therefore, it is very important to at least have your foundational knowledge on these topics. Okay, I know what you're thinking right now. Without any infrastructure work experience, how can I update these skills? This is what you're thinking now, right? Don't worry, I have a solid recommendation for you. The AZ-104 Microsoft Azure Administrator Associate Certification. I strongly, strongly recommend this certification for any experienced IT professional looking to transition into Azure Data Engineering role. In this certification, you will learn most of the foundational networking and security concepts such as virtual networks, storage, compute, identity, security, and governance. So when you complete this certification, the level of understanding on Azure infrastructure will be much higher, making you a stronger candidate for senior level data engineering roles and boosting your chances of getting hired. So this is the second step that you need to take as part of your interview preparation. Okay, we have covered the networking and security. Now let's talk about DevOps skills, another crucial area for data engineers. When it comes to DevOps, there are two key skills every data engineer should master. The first one is the Git operation, and the second one is the CACD pipelines. In the Git operation, you need a solid understanding of source control, branching strategies, and Git fundamentals. These are essential for managing your code efficiently in a collaborative environment. And in the CACD aspects, I would recommend you to implement two hands-on projects. One is the CACD for Azure Databricks, and the next one is the CACD for Azure Data Factory, since these are the two most widely used tools in Azure Data Engineering. Also, an important thing to note is, the CACD pipelines often rely on YAML configuration, so gaining a good understanding of YAML syntax is also essential. I have provided detailed learning resources in the documentation to help you get started with this. Trust me, DevOps experience is a common interview topic. You'll be definitely asked few questions related to this in your interview. So mastering these skills will significantly boost your chances of performing well and landing your dream data engineering role. Okay, now let's discuss the next important skill that every data engineer should have is the performance optimization. This is purely a core data engineering topic. You'll definitely get a question about performance optimization in your interview. The reason for this is, as a data engineer, 
One of your primary responsibilities is to build scalable and efficient data pipelines where performance plays a key role. So when it comes to the performance, in recent days, Databricks is widely used in most of the ETL processes. So therefore, I would highly recommend to visit this official Databricks documentation where it has almost all the information of different optimization that you can do for your data workloads. So before attending your interview, please take some time and read through this documentation, which will definitely help you to do well in your interview. Also, you can choose any two performance techniques, say for example, data catching and data pruning, and think of a scenario where you can implement these in your pipelines. And in the interview, you can explain the optimization process that helped your pipeline performance. So it is very important that you should prepare your scenario before the interview. And when you ask a question like, what are the some of the performance optimization work that you have done, you'll be able to answer this better. As a result of this, the interviewer would be pretty happy that you have a good understanding of the different performance techniques, which will really boost your chances even further. I will also provide some resources available online in the documentation, which will help you in your preparation. Okay, so far we have explored the key skill areas for data engineering, which are networking, security, DevOps, and performance. Now we are moving into the final and equally critical skill, which is cost awareness. Cost plays a vital role in every data engineering project. As you all know that, before a company begins building a data platform, one of the first questions that comes up is, how much will this cost us? As a senior level data engineer, it's essential to design and implement solution with cost efficiency in mind. This is something you'll likely be tested during your interview, especially for senior roles. For example, you might be getting a question like, can you explain a use case where you chose one Azure service or another based on cost? This is a common interview question and you should be prepared to answer it confidently. To tackle this, I recommend preparing at least one scenario where cost was a key factor in your decision making process. In my real time streaming project video on YouTube, I shared a practical example where I chose Azure Function or Azure Databricks to stream weather data from a weather API to Azure Event Hub. The reason is, Azure functions were significantly most cost effective for this specific use case. Similarly, you can explore the Azure customer success stories documentation to find a real world use case. Use those as inspiration to make your own scenario and be ready to explain it during interview when you're asked this similar question. These kinds of real world examples can really set you apart during interviews. Another strong recommendation is to get hands on with the Azure pricing calculator. This tool helps you estimate the cost of different Azure services in various scenarios. Being comfortable with it will show that you understand not just the technical side, but also the business value and financial impact of your data engineering decisions, something that's crucial for any data engineer. All right, we have now covered all the essential skills and the complete preparation plan to help you crack your next data engineering interview. But here comes the most important part how to bring it all together into a solid preparation strategy. Before attending your next interview, the first and foremost step is to build a strong foundational knowledge in Azure infrastructure concepts. As mentioned earlier, the best way to achieve this is by getting the AZ-104 certification. It not only gives you the core knowledge, but also boosts your profile in the job search. Once you have completed that, Head over to the Azure Customer Success Stories documentation and pick one real-world case study. Use that as a reference point to start creating your own project scenario. One important thing that I would recommend is start writing the project scenario that you are creating. Yes, physically write it on your paper or type it out. Make sure your project use case covers these important topics. Two performance optimization techniques using Azure Databricks a scenario where you reduced cost significantly, networking and security measures you implemented in your project, your CACD implementation using Azure DevOps. Treat this like your go-to use case. Update it regularly as you learn new things. Include it in your resume to showcase a well-rounded project that highlights both technical and strategic thinking. Once you have written it down, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to review your scenario, provide feedback, and help you strengthen it further. When you walk into your interview with this level of clarity and preparation, I'm 100% sure that you'll perform well at your very best. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video and good luck with your interview preparation.